Hello and welcome, friends. This is Andre Aguilas de Jardin, and I'm going to do a second Eldritch Moon Cracker Pack, this time featuring the uh, lovely Liliana. Yes. Crack. All right. Hey! Starting off with something I would first pick Choking Restraints. It's a three-man enchant creature. It can't attack or block, and then for five mana, you can sack it to exile enchanted creature. <coughs> uh, so it is kind of a pacifism for an extra mana, uh, but the five mana means, one, if the creature has an annoying ability, later on you can get rid of it, and two, being able to sacrifice this and exile the enchanted creature helps enable your delirium and make sure your opponent's delirium is not enabled. Um, B minus for this card. I would. For, this is a strong contender. I'd happily take the choking restraints, and that poor guy in the pitcher not doing well. All right, this is certainly not a B minus. It is strange augmentation. Enchant creature gets plus one, and with delirium, enchant creature gets an additional plus two plus two. Um, I don't like playing creature enchantments because it opens up to a certain amount of risk. Um, I'm probably playing them less than I should, but I'm definitely not playing this thing less than I should. Uh, just a plus one, plus one, and then maybe if you have Delirium, it gets plus three, plus three. Yeah, no, enchantments are some of the, one of the harder things to get in the graveyard, and I feel this is a better Delirium enabler, as in I'm going to put it on a 2-2, two, two, and then they're going to block with a 3-5 or a 3-4, and my creature's going to die, and now I'll have two things to enable Delirium. A D minus for this card. All right, Backwoods Survivalist. It's a 4-3 for four, 4, so on the vanilla scale that passes the test. And Delirium, it gets plus 1, plus 1 Trample as long as there are 4 or more card types in my graveyard. A C. I think this is a C. I don't think the Delirium pushes it anything over than the C. It has a bit of upside. That's fine. So a C for you. All right. Woodcutter's Grit. Mm, that guy looks like he has a lot of grit. Look at him. It's an instant for three mana. Target creature control gets plus three, plus three, and gains hexproof until end of turn. I generally don't like my combat tricks to cost three mana. Um, in theory, this one should help you like survive whatever is targeting it, be it a spell or combat. But plus three, plus three, and hexproof just seem to be two different things. Uh, like plus three, plus three, and trample, you get. All right, smash him, cut through. Hexproof, you also get protect spells. This one, uh, I don't know. And that guy looks like he has indestructible more than hexproof, to be perfectly honest. I'm going to give this a D. I don't think I'll end up playing it most of the time. Just three man. If you have three man up, I'm probably suspicious you have something going on. All right, Faithbearer Paladin. I hate his stupid weapon. His weapon is as stupid as hell. Look at that. I'm holding a club at the very end to increase the least amount of range. Uh, he's a 3-4 lifelink for 5. That's a C. I really like lifelink. I think it's an underrated ability, but this guy is certainly nothing special. All right, Convolute. Three mana, card counter target spell unless it's controller pays four. Um, blue and two colorless. This isn't a hard counter spell. I mean, I'll I'll run it. I also won't run it. I think it's a C. I think it's pretty interchangeable. It does have an expiration date. You know, later in the game, it can't counter everything. Uh, it will usually trade one for one, but you don't get to be that happy about it. I think it's a C. All right, Falcon Wrath Reaver. It's a red and a colorless for a 2-2 two, two for two, and it has a bunch of flavor text. Um, C? Prob probably, I don't know, two twos for two usually have upside, but this is red, and the fact that this one doesn't have a strange drawback probably is upside. And the red Argodax and vampires may just need one, so C. All right. Iron Rites Cleansing, Exile, Targeted Artifact or Enchantment. 
this is a sideboard card. When you bring it in, it's because there's one really good target and a couple of other targets you'll be happy to get rid of. In that case, it'll be. Otherwise, it is definitely just garbage. So it's sideboard. Pry in question. Target opponent loses three life and puts a card from his or her hand on top of his or her library. Uh, so I wouldn't pay three mana. Target player loses three life. Uh, the putting a card from her hand on top of his or her library. If they have cards in hand, it's you're technically not down for one, but generally in limited, you'd rather a creature affecting the board than then skipping a draw step. And, I mean, if they have no cards in hand and you top deck this late game, it is a disaster. Overall, D-, minus, not looking to play this card. I think if you never played this card, you would be correct. All right, give no ground. Four mana, white and three colorless. Target creature gets plus six, plus six until end of turn and can block any number of creatures this turn. Uh, a four mana combat trick is a really hard sell for me. Um, and it, this, I feel they forgot to write like untap target creature because if it had that, I think this card would be very good. Or not very good, but it would be playable. But the fact you have to have a blocker, now some people are going to go immediately to the, oh man, they're going to like swing in for lethal thinking they get me, and then I'm going to like cast this and block everything until kill two of their creatures and my guy is going to live, and that's probably not going to happen. Um, generally with four mana up, unless there's no other situation, like they think they need to swing for lethal, this can be played around. I think it's a D. I think it's a poor combat trick. If the effect is powerful, but I just think good players can know how to play around this, and they will instinctively do it. All right, murder, destroy target creature, three black, A minus. So far, best card in the pack. This was the fixed Doom Blade. Um. Yes, I'm taking this. It's just so efficient at killing anything. This is what I want. And the rare is Selfless Spirit. A 2-1 flying, and you can sacrifice it so creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. I think a 2-1 flyer with no drawback for 2 is a uh, C+. I think this sacrifice it may be enough to bump it up to B-, because... Later on in the game, it can probably protect your best creature. Um, I'm still not picking this over murder, though. I might pick it over choking restraints, but definitely not murder. And for the flip card, we have the Graft Rats. Uh, it's a 2-1 for 1, and it can meld with something, yada, yada, yada. This is a C-. minus. It's a 2-1 for 1, and it has not really upside. It has something different. I do like how the meld is necessary because there are some times where you would just want the two separate creatures. Alright, and I got a foil. Uh, some come to temptation. Oh yeah! Instant sign in blood for an additional mana. But you can't target your opponents. So you draw two cards and you lose two life? Um, I'm not looking to play this. This is... I mean, sometimes I'll play it and it'll be a C-, minus, but this is, wow. You know, an extra colored mana divination that you lose to life. This this is no Sign and Blood. This is no Knight's Whisper. This is the tone down of those. Uh, so I think the first pick in this pack is just Murder. Not close. It's just by far the most powerful thing that's going on in here. The comparable picks would be Choking Restraint and Selfless Spirit, but I think this is just so efficient. It's an instant. It gets there. That's your pick. All right, this is Andre Aguides de Jardin, and I'm saving signing off. Have a good day, friend.